good. Hey guys, what's going on? Pete and Scott here again for another episode of To Be Determined. Still working on that name. Um, today we're going to be talking about you know, whether or not you should get your real estate license and, and everything around getting your real estate license. So first and foremost, Scott, what's going on, brother? Hey, what's going on, man? Um, yes, we, uh, before we get too far, I want to say we took a big blow last week. We learned that there is already a behind the curtains podcast. So for the future growth of this thing, I think we're really going to have to put that call out. We are not going with two guys, one house, um, as the podcast name. So we need some feedback, people. Get creative. Send us your suggestions. Uh, let's try and keep it PG, and uh, but also uh, fun and entertaining. All right. So two guys and one house is out, and behind the curtain looks like it's out too. But we'll see on that. So um, anyway, so getting back to you know getting your real estate license, Scott. So like in the shortest, you know, one or two sentences, why did you get your real estate license? All right. So. I was running my family's landscape business. Um, I've always had a very entrepreneurial um, drive. And when I decided I needed a change, I looked for an industry that I thought was ready for you know me to jump in and maybe take a different approach. I wanted to put that entrepreneurial spirit to good use and really you know help people at a higher level than I thought I was seeing a lot of other uh, you know home buyers get helped by, you know, other real estate agents. Okay, cool. And, you know, similarly, I mean, I, I got my real estate license. I was, I had my stint of landscaping, which we obviously talk about quite a bit. Uh, and just a lot of, you know, physical labor jobs, not super rewarding, not really helping people. Um, and so just jumped in, went, got my license and, and jumped in with both feet and really wanted to help people. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, the reason this kind of came up is I have a client young, super ambitious guy. Um, and he was asking me, you know, how do I get my real estate license? And I think for me, I know it's a question that kind of comes up quite a bit. Um, and as we discussed you a little bit too. So let me just ask you, especially from your role in coaching, what makes a good real estate agent? Um, and when I say that, I mean more, you know, what, you know, as a realtor, right? Like what would allow me to be a good agent as opposed to what should buyers and sellers look for in a real estate agent? Yeah, I mean, I think if you're gonna get into this field, um, two things that would really stand out to me are, you really genuinely have to have people as your center focus, you know, for what you're trying to accomplish in getting into this business. If you don't want to help people, um, it's probably not the right business for you because that's literally all we do all day, every day, is help people, right? And I know last week we talked a little bit about, you know, just that responsibility that we have to our clients. I think um, you can't do this business day in and day out without wanting to help people. Um, and then secondly, I think um, from my experience in that coaching role, um, resourcefulness is another trait that I could always tell when I was first talking to someone, you know, based on the conversation that we would have um, and just the way that they talk, whether they were gonna be someone that would go out and find answers and, you know, find solutions rather than expect everything to come to them. Um, there's certainly, you know, ways out there to make this a very passive business where leads come your way and, you know, business comes your way, but you've got to be resourceful and go out there and, you know, work for it. So. Yeah, man, I would agree a hundred percent. I mean, some people may tell you real estate is not a true entrepreneurial, you know, venture, but I would argue that and say it absolutely is, right? We may have a uh, backing of a real estate office behind us. We may not be starting from the ground up, but individually as building our own book of business, you know, getting in touch with our future clients, I mean, self-starter, right? Nobody's yanking on you to wake up in the morning and make sure you're in the office, right? And morning yeah. routines and things like that are stuff we can get into at another time. But like something that I've always thought was fascinating as I've been met more and more people within the real estate industry is like how many different avenues this business can take you right so you know i know people who have gotten into coaching roles and have helped people do that right d rad friend of the friend of the show he'll be on eventually i'm sure um 
you know, I have, I know somebody who started a business putting in the signpost for the signs and I hire him to come and do my signs. Like, so I think entrepreneurially, I guess you would say, right. There's so many different avenues where if you can learn to build a business, you can take that business and you can go do anything. Yeah. And I think, uh, we were talking about this one the other day too, is one of my favorites is our friend Reese Serino, who, you know, her mom has been in the business. Um, Reese actually went and got her license so that she could have kind of learned the back end of the business and you know provide some extra value. But her her niche in the business now is doing transaction management. And we know full well as we've been growing our business and just recently hired our first, you know, virtual assistant, how important, you know, having that part of the business taken off your plate as you get busier. Um, so that's another great example of like there really are endless amounts of ways to kind of join the real estate world um, because of all those ancillary services that you know come into the big picture. So um, I think there's a lot of different paths, um, and that's one of the cool things about real estate. Um, there's endless things that you can do in this business. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I think one of the biggest misconceptions, right, is that it's an easy job, right? I, I hear that quite a bit, right? That I think, you know, a lot of people come into the business, they think, okay, I'm going to just, you know, sit in an open house and I'm going to make thousands of dollars. Um, and what I would say to that is, you know, certainly there are parts of the job that can be perceived as simple, right? Sitting at an open house can be simple. Um, writing up a contract once you know how to do it can be simple. However, what you, uh, the majority of the public, unless you've been through it, I would say probably don't see is having, for example, writing that offer for a client, especially in the market that we've had is a perfect example, right? Is doing the analysis to see where they should be, uh, giving them advice on how much to offer, what they're comfortable with. I mean, those that's really where where it becomes worth it, right? We're, we're there guiding people. Sure, writing the contract, that is something that, you know, is a transaction manager can do. But those little things in between the seemingly easy or simple parts of the job are, are really the most challenging part. Um, yeah, and you know, I, I actually take a slightly different view on that. Like some of those things that you just mentioned, to me are actually the easy parts of this job. They truly are the easy, like sitting at an open house is not by base level definition, a very difficult thing to do, um, to do one well, um, and really put all that effort into what leads up to the open house is where it turns into, it's still a relatively simple task, um, but you can certainly do it at a higher level. And the same thing with writing an offer, right? Um, the, the process of putting that data into the offer, super easy. Um, knowing how to actually analyze the market and determine based on, you know, how many days on market has this home been on? What's the, you know, how many other offers are we competing against? Things like that is what determines, you know, whether it's truly, you know, it, it's not so easy. Um, so no, that, that's like, great. Yeah, yeah. That's a great point. And, and, you know, I think like building rapport and things like that. And look, we could go on and on about that, especially with your coaching experience and just things that we've done. Um, so I think I heard a stat earlier this year that there were more real estate agents in the business than there were actually homes for sale in the state of New Jersey, which was a fascinating number. I think we tend to see that a lot of people get their real estate license when the market's good. And over time and not so much, we start to see that people start to leave the business. So I kind of wanted to ask you, I mean, why do you think so many agents not only come into the business, but more, more directly, why do they leave the business? Why do so many agents not make it in the business? So I think it's, you know, it's interesting, right? It's, it's also not a overly expensive business to get into at a very base level, right? But those dues do start to add up. Even if you've spent no money on your business, which isn't really a good recipe for success, right? I think you do need to invest in some of the additional tools that allow you to kind of grow your business. Um, and just everything is time and effort. Um, so I think when agents get into this business and then it's easy to say, all right, year one, I'm gonna drop, you know, maybe 1500 to two grand on the base level investment across you know, joining the board and joining the MLS and all those miscellaneous, you know, small expenses. But now when you get into year two and you haven't had a closing, maybe it starts to get a little bit tougher to justify. Am I going to shell out another 1500 to two grand? 
um, year three, and I still haven't sold a house, or maybe I sold a house, but that you know that pro and con list starts to get a little bit heavier on the cons of staying in the business, and I think that just boils down to again going back to um, th this is not a easy job um, to break into. It's not an easy field to break into and truly rise to a level of success, um, especially not with a good support system. Um, I know we've talked a lot th about that as well, is just how important our peers and you know who we surround ourselves with is. Um, so I think oftentimes agents get kind of lost and you know that is the part where you, know, you can sometimes feel like you're living on an island and if you don't have that support system to pull you back in and keep you motivated, it can be tough to keep your drive going. So. Um, I know that was kind of rambling, but, um, no, not at all. I think, no, I think you touched on like a great point is like, if, so if, if I, if Scott, if you were not in the real, you were still landscaping and you said to me, Pete, you know, I'm thinking of getting my real estate license, you know, what should I do? What should I look for? Right. I think you really touched on it. I mean, I think I, I always attribute a lot of my success early was having a great mentor. And having somebody who I could pick the phone up and be like, hey, like, what should I do here? Hey, what should I do there? Am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? And like to follow that up too is also like there's a plan out there, man. There are tons of successful real estate agents and we often, you know, the closings aren't coming. So we try this and then that's not working. We, we try that. So um, as we're kind of coming up on the end of it here, I mean, I think we touched on some really good points. So what I would just say to you, Scott, is like, if somebody came to you and said, Scott, you know, I want to get my real estate license. I'd like to join your team. You know, what's something you're looking for in that person? And what would you kind of give them like a heads up and just say, expect this? Like, what would you say to them? So I think the other, the, the final closing thought on this that I have is um, to that question from that person, my question back to them would just be simply, what are you hoping to accomplish? because there's going to be no way for that person to feel fulfilled unless we can clearly identify what they're looking to accomplish. And then from there, it's just a matter of playing matchmaker into what role fits best, best for them. Are they getting their license so they can sell one house a year? Are they getting their license so they can sell their mom's house? Like what, what's the big picture here? Are you trying to start a career in this real estate business? Um, my advice would be totally based on that. And that's why, Oftentimes I will say, I, I have clients ask me about getting into this business and I'll tell them like, you know, if, if they seem like they're kind of on the fence, I say the simplest path maybe exploring this is go take the real estate course, pass your real estate exam. You can hand your license in referral for very inexpensive. I think it's like $75 a year to keep it actively um, in a referral basis. And then I tell that person, hey, if you end up continuing to generate, let's say four to six leads that you're throwing to me and I'm paying you a referral on, it's probably pretty likely that you could leave your current job or leave your current situation and jump into this business and be a success because you are generating leads and you're just having me handle them. So that's one easy path into this business that I always like to recommend to people. Um, but if you're interested, you know, give myself or Pete a call and would be happy to you know do a deep dive on what you know what we can do to help yeah man love it love it so all right guys so listen that that does it for us today talking about you know what it takes to be a real estate agent uh in the very abbreviated version of course if you guys have any questions on anything you can always reach out to myself or scott be sure to look out for us next time give us a like drop us a comment we still need a name uh thanks so much you guys enjoy the rest of your week till next time guys <laughs>